Hey folks, Sandra G here and welcome back to another tutorial video. Today video is going to focus on how to beat Tar Hasha stage 7 in the most efficient way as much as possible. So first thing first, you need to teleport to Iridian Shelter Match which is located in the Nicopolis region. After that, walk all the way down to the meadows and you will find Tar Hasha himself waiting for you to challenge him. And just like any hunting ground boss, you can only enter the dungeon by yourself. After you successfully enter the dungeon, there will be an orb in the middle and by interacting with it, you're gonna give an options of removing the pattern, stage 3, stage 2, stage 1. By clicking on the fourth one, you are going to fight Todd Hashas on stage 7. I also want to point out that each pattern that you remove will reduce the number of rewards you obtain. Here is the list and you will need this material to craft the new Lucid Fairy accessory. The first mechanic you need to worry about is the embers. Your character will receive 50 stack of embers. The ember stack is reduced by 1 to every 6 seconds. You also lose the ember stacks after getting hit by Tar Hasha basic attack or skills. Luckily, Tar Hasha basic attack is predictable, so you can dodge it by walking behind him. The second mechanic is puddles. The puddle will randomly spawn in all directions and gradually moving closer to your character. Touching puddles will give you a puddle stacks, and having 4 stacks will restore 5 ember stacks and play a stop debuff on your character. I recommend pick up the first 2 or 3 portal stack to save the last 1 or 2 for the one shot mechanic. This is where Tor Hasha begins to charge up and release a powerful attack that will instantly kill your characters or take away your ember stack if you dodge it with an iframe skill. As you can see here, I already have 3 stack of portals and all I have to do is stand into the last ones and by doing that I will get a soft debuff which prevent my characters from getting one shot or losing any stack of embers. Tall Hasha Explosion Magic Circle is probably one of the worst mechanics that you need to worry about. Tall Hasha will summon a multiple magic circle which detonates afterward, dealing a lot of damage and taking away your ember stack if you get hit by it. I do want to point out that this magic circle hit like a truck. Amongst all Tar Hasha's skills, he will summon as Miss Dot to help him out. This monster has a charge ability which applies a slow debuff if you get hit by it. Fortunately, you can send the mini boss back to the other world by leading him to the rest portal circle. On to the next mechanic and that is going to be the candle spider. The spider will randomly spawn at a known location and it will teleport away after a few seconds. Killing the spider will restore your ember stack by 5. However, you will lose 5 ember stack if Tar Hasha killed the spider instead. The spider can also taunt the boss. Additionally, the spider has a 30 second respawn time so always make sure to look for the spider. Kill it as soon as possible as it spawn. Tar Hasha does has one more mechanic and that is the fire particles. Tar Hasha will charge up for a few seconds and release the fire particles flowing around him. Touching the first fire particle will spread out even more from time to time. This mechanic is pretty easy to deal with as you only need to touch one after the spawn while leaving the other ones flowing around. Additionally, I do want to point out the burning ground effect was caused by the meteor attack from Tar Hasha. I know a lot of players who think that if they stand near to it, they're not going to touch it. But let me be honest here, I touched that thing multiple times without even noticing. So the best thing you want to do is actually move away from it, don't even look it back, and focus on dealing damage as much as possible on Tar Hasha. The next mechanic is going to be spider altars. Tar Hasha will summon 4 spiders with 4 different circles. Killing the spider will give your characters a buff like attack, defense, restore HP, and evasion. The top altar provides evasion buff, the left one provides attack buff, the bottom provides defense buff, and the right one restore HP. Tar Hasha will receive the buff instead based on how many spiders you fail to kill. I recommend killing the right one first because that one will restore Tar Hasha HP if you fail to kill it. The bottom, the top, and the left one is not really matters as long as you have enough damage to kill Tar Hasha. Otherwise, always go for the right one if you think you're gonna fail the auto mechanic. At 66.99%, Tar Hasha will summon a Miss Dot again to help him out. This monster has a charge ability as I mentioned before which applies a soul debuff if you get hit by it. Fortunately, you can send him back to the other world by leading him to the red portal circle. The one shot ash mechanic will happen again at 65.99%. Tall Hasha will teleport into the middle and charge up a powerful attack. This attack will surely one shot your characters. The only way to actually avoid it is getting the full stack of portals to get a stop debuff or dodge it with an iframe skills. At this point, if you have not moved the dog into the portal yet, your best choice is due to iframe skills or if somehow you manage to get a full portal stack to prevent getting one shot. 
The spider outer will spawn again at 62.99%. Always go for the right one because that one will restore top hearts HP. I accidentally did manage to fail this mechanics because I thought that the left one is actually the healing one, but it wasn't the case. Always go to the right one. Don't make the same mistake as I did for this mechanic. Another thing I do want to point out is that Tohasha does have two different teleport ability. One that summons multiple illusion and jump away and the other one is where he teleport toward you and does explosion damage. Not only that explosion does damage but also knock back your character as well. So that's the thing that you want to keep in mind when you're fighting against Tohasha. The spider outer will happen again at 52.99%. Once again, always go for the right spider if you think you could fail this mechanics. Otherwise, kill all the spider as much as you can. Fortunately, another spider outer will spawn again at 37.99%, kill the right ones or kill every single spider as much as you can. At 36.99%, Tohasha will summon a Miss Dot again. This time, make sure to take him out as soon as possible because the next mechanic is going to be very important by the way. The one shot as mechanic will happen again at 35.98% or aka 36%. Tohasha will teleport back into the middle and charge up a powerful attack. If you still have the Miss Dot on the field, try to avoid him as much as possible. At this point, either use your iframe skill or your HP skill that prevent your character from dying at 1 HP. I personally have a little bit of problem with this one because I actually had a few run before with a Miss Dot at this specific HP and the Miss Dot keep reducing my movement speed whenever I try to get a puddle so make sure you keep the Miss Dot away before the Ash mechanic happen. At 34.99% HP and below, Fire Carpet and Frenzy Mode will happen continuously over time. Tohasha will summon a Fire Carpet around the map every 45 seconds and it lasts roughly 55 seconds or a minute. The fire copy will deal damage over time and reduce your ember stacks. Moreover, Tohasha will go into the frenzy mode below 35% HP, which give him a damage buff and provide two new different ability. One of the frenzy abilities is actually the midi fireball, where he reads multiple fireballs coming at to your catcher. The other ability is actually more focused on bursting attacks. As you can see here, he's gonna charge up and release a fire spin circle. You can actually dodge it if you manage to find a very specific location to avoid the explosion. The spider outer will happen again at 29.99% or 30% HP. At this point, kill the right one first and focus on the top, bottom, or left or kill every single one as much as you can because fighting Tohasha under frenzy mode is very difficult. This guy has so many opportunities to one-shot your catcher with any of his ability. Additionally, I do want to point out that the Meteor Shower is in the X Mart now, so it's a little bit bigger range in my opinion, but it's going to deal more damage if you actually stand between the two Meteor Showers, so keep that in mind. Once again, the Spider Outer will spawn again at 21.99%. Man, this guy really loved the Spider Outer. Because I have never seen any bosses that use the same mechanic over, over, and over again. It's a little bit tricky in the beginning, but it's getting quite annoying over time doing the same mechanic over again. There is one special mechanic, and that is the Inferno Mode. Tell Harsha will go into an Inferno mode, so if he manages to get 50 stacks of embers on himself, he get at least 1 stack every time you lose the stack, so you must manage your ember stack properly so he doesn't go into the Inferno mode in the early game. In the Inferno mode, Tal Harsha will melt your armor and deal damage over time with his fire aura. Also, the spider outer spawn at 9.99% or 10% HP, so watch out for that one. Dealing with the spider and then Inferno Mode at the same time at this point is very difficult, so make sure you manage your Ember stack properly. There is a blind debuff happening along with the one shot Ash mechanic at 5.99% or 6% HP, which is pretty interesting because what it does is prevent your catcher to find the portal so you can get a 4 stack to use the stop debuff to prevent your catcher to get one shot by the Ash mechanic. At 4.99% HP or 5% HP, Tal Hasha will summon the Miss Dot first and then follow up with the Spider Outer. I recommend dealing with the Spider Outer first by killing the right ones for the HP recovery and then send the Miss Dot back to the other world. Also, this is going to be the last mechanic of the fight after you deal with the Spider Outer along with the Miss Dot. After this, all you have to do is kill Tal Hasha himself. 
All right, at this point, you should be able to kill Tohasha stage 7. Like, this guy is so difficult, especially in Inferno Mode. I had such a hard time trying to deal with him. If you notice that my debuffs, I had so many armor being melted over and over again. Anyway, the rest of this clip is going to be about my equipment and what did I use for Tohasha. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're back with another equipment for Tail Hotsha. So this one is going to be full attack and set effects along with plus 16 attack at Vonnie Trinket, which is pretty good by the way. I do have my Glacier Trinket for the extra 12% quivery bonus to trigger the attack and set effects. For my wing weapons, I actually switched out some of my random status inker, which include accuracies and then evasion for the two offsetting status. Now I gotta be honest here, the accuracies help a lot. If you fail to kill one of the spiders from the altar and the Tehosha managed to get more evasion, that is very difficult. And having the accuracy status incurred help a lot. Now for my art, it's going to be Divine Retribution for my accessories, for Carolines, except for the necklace. Man, I'm, I'm still working on that. I'm, I still need the art stone to craft the last piece of equipment, plus three border seal, along with hair accessory and some cosmetics. Pretty straightforward. All right, on to my cars. For the cars, especially the blue one, if you can get, excuse me, hold on, let me click on the merch shop. If you can get this card, uh, I believe this one is the Mamelio card. If you can get this card, it's going to help you a lot. The only reason why I'm not using this one because I have out of body would reduce my damage taken by around 26%, which is pretty good. If you had that, Mamelio card is going to help you a lot with Tahasha. Zara's optional, Noel's optional, but personally, go for Mamelio cards. Green card, Lucia for extra raw damage. Always use Demon Law Monarch's cards because Tahasha is a mutant monster, it's a mutant type. He has a lot of CR by the way, critical resistance, and you need minimum crit chance to deal a lot of damage. Now, if you're a class that have already has a ton of minimum crit chance, especially for Wizard, with I believe was the Arsgate Explosion, you get like 50% minimum crit chance, which is pretty OP by the way. And then for the red cards, go for a cursed double club card for extra damage as game mutant. I know a lot of people who use like Druid class or any bleeding or poison types card, you can always go for Vanillas or a Prison Cutter, but personally, I would always go for the Curse card because this one is always consistent and will always provide damage against a mutant monster up time permanently. Now, purple card. There is a few, build, no, actually there is only one knockback skill and that is the teleportation skill from the Telhasha. I recommend getting at least one Gaze of Golem card and two May card. If you don't have May card, that's okay. Go straight for three Gaze of Golem card and that is fine as well. Or using modest cards, like I believe there's a purple modest card that gives you like 45 crit chance. That one is good as well. But if you manage to get your hand on May card, this one will help you a lot to deal with the mutant type. Alright, so onto my sister is going to be Morimponia, Mott, Mirtus, and so comes. Now this one is going to give me the extra intelligence, extra SPR, extra critical rate values, which is really good by the way. Extra magic critical damage for whenever I'm landing critical attacks. Now onto my skill bear is going to be max heals, max guardian saying, max face, no cures. Exorcist, max rubix, max katikazor, giga rays, 1.2 entity, 1.2 Encantia, and the rest go to into aqua. Crusaders, Max Chains, Sacrus, Condemned, Retaliations, Protection of the Goddess, and the rest goes into Holy Smash. If you have 3 extra skill points from the level 445 all the way to 450, throw them into the Holy Smash. You can always go Max Holy Smash in my opinion, and then just go straight into like 3 point Retaliation. But personally, I prefer Retaliation for heavy nooks from long range. Sadus. Max out Asteroid Body Explosions, Max out Fashitas, Max out Pranas, 1.2 Procession for to reset the outer bodies, 1.2 Bakiti to escape, and the rest is pretty straightforward. This is what I use for Tel Hasha. It's definitely doable with Vana equipment as long as you have the new weapon, the new legend weapon actually, where either this nice Savinus or the Glacier ones. And then for the accessory, just get one Caroline because with one Caroline, you can actually get the, the low version of the set effect. And you can actually get a little bit of damage coming out from this side effect, which is pretty good by the way. Now, for the Divine Retribution, Thunderbolt, or maybe Storm, if your class heavily focused on DOT damage, always go for Thunderbolts. If your class has a lot of burst damage, like myself, go for Divine Retribution. Now, if you're using Feather Force, Towers, and Shadow Mancer, I think 
personally i think storm art would be much better because you have this ability that triggers storm art all the time which is pretty good by the way anyway that is pretty much for this video this is strategy once again and i will see you all in the next video peace out